I'd like to call this meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order. That's uh, 6.04. Um, it's been a while, so hope we just get right back into the groove and have a nice, uh, um, well, uh, efficient and um, hopefully productive meeting. Um, let's see. We've got some meeting minutes backed up to look at. Um, so there are two sets of meeting minutes. I don't know if we can take those together or separately. I did have one um, thing that I noticed on, I think it was the July 13th minutes that uh, Paul Florio's name was not spelled right. I think it was Paul Florio was written in there. Um, that's the only thing I noticed that was um, that was not as I expected it to be. Does anybody else have any um, comments on the meeting minutes from either July 13th or the 26th to add? I'm not good. We'll change that. Nope, not at the moment. Okay. Um, then I would entertain a motion. We'll do both, both sets of minutes, July 13th and July 26th. Second. All right. Um, those in favor? Uh, Fred? All those in favor? Fred? Sorry. Uh, Julia? Yes. And okay. I'm yeah, Julie. I okay. I couldn't hear Fred. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll shout. All right. Okay, great. Um, the vendor and payroll warrants were included in the meeting materials. Are there any uh, comments or um, anything on those? Just glad they were face up this time and not. <laughs> <coughs> mm. All right, very good. Um, okay, it's time for public comment to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. I'm pretty sure we have at least one person for public comment today. Um, so you wanna go ahead, Keith? Sure. Um, I just wanted to re go or go over briefly again, the chapter 90 that we had talked about, uh, pro the projects that is, that we had talked about a few months ago. It was prior to elections so that I know that when we vote, when the board voted on it, um, Fred and you were on, Joyce, you were both on the, at the time and Juliana wasn't. So um, I don't know if you want to re go over it again with Juliana involved in it, or um, I can explain this project. And that is, it is on Fairview Way. And I think most everybody has seen in the winter time when the intersection of Fairview Way and Sandy Lane floods. Hang on a minute. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's the town of Waitley calling a robocall. <laughs> All right. I happen to have that's why everybody's phone's them. gone off because it's the robocall. It's the robocall. Yeah. <laughs> hey, our town resources at work. I thought that was a perfect reason for a robocall. So I was I'm actually happy to see that. I happen to have all the receivers for the phones, all the various phones in the house in my room right now. So that's why it exploded here. And I muted myself. <laughs> so to recapture the, the project request that I'm submitting to MassDOT, and I've already discussed this previously with the select board, was the Fairview Way drainage. And at the end of Fairview Way, there's a detention basin where all the catch basins run. And in the wintertime, when the ground is frozen, the soil, it becomes impermeable. And when the water runs into it, it can't go anywhere. It's like going into a bathtub and just mm. sits there. And then consequently, the road floods. We're looking to make this um, like a rain garden so that it will absorb water 
all year long and will eliminate the, the flooding press problems we have in the winter time. And so that's what the project that I would leave in the town office for the select board signatures. Okay, cool. Okay. I have a quick question. Um, I know water freezes at the same temperature, you know, no, you know, no matter what. So is there something about the foliage that you put in there that keeps it a little bit warmer so that you don't get the ice dams in it? No, when, what, the, like when you build a rain garden type thing, and this is similar to stuff that was built um, in Pine Plain Estates, and that is um, you use different types of materials, primarily things like wood chips instead mm -hmm. of soil so that the water, Oh, okay. Um, when, it, when it freezes the water, you can, wood chips won't freeze solid like soil does. Okay. And it'll still, but underneath the wood chips will also be um, leaching chambers so that there'll be additional storage. And so it's, it's more that it's a, it's a glorified, rain garden, I guess is fair to say. Okay. All right. The, the other thing that's nice about the soils in East Waitley is they're extremely sandy. So as soon as you get the water below the frost line, the water just takes off and runs through that sand. So. Okay. So appropriate for Sandy Lane to have this, I guess. Yes, very, very much so. Okay. So is this a, something we need a vote on, Brian? Um, did they did they vote on it before, Keith? So if we voted before, I think so. But it, it won't hurt to just to go revote it, and I'll leave it at I'll leave it on the desk. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think um, just having an election would invalidate a vote of the prior people on the board. But I would be willing to entertain a motion, even if it turns out to be redundant. Um, I'm. Go ahead. <laughs> It's Julia's uh, turn. Oh, I'll go for it. You can call me Julie, and I should okay. have said that the in the meeting minutes. My name is Julie or Juliana, but not Julia. Huh. You know. Um, okay. Yeah, I will uh, make a motion to uh, okay the rain garden as described by Keith. Second. Oh, great. All those in favor? Uh, Julie. Yes. Fred. And me, yes. Okay, great. Uh, are there any further public comment? Can I have one other, I have one comment for Keith. Keith, can you just go through quickly the Haydenville Road closures that's coming up just so we get it public? Sure, um, next Monday, I am planning on replacing a, or put, adding a catch basin in the area of number 341, which is fairly close to the Chestnut Plain Road intersection. And we will be, the road will be closed at Westbrook Road intersection and at Chestnut Plain Road intersection. And mm -hmm. traffic will be detoured via Westbrook Road back to Chestnut Plain. I'm anticipating that it will be, be all done by between three and four in, in the afternoon and reopen back to traffic. Thank you. Okay. There'll be message boards going up tomorrow to also alleviate, you know, alleviate or let the traveling public know from out of town. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Keith. Um, is there any other public comment before we go on to our appointments? Okay. Seeing none. Um, our first appointment and first and only appointment is Mike Archibald from the uh, Board of Health and uh, our public health nurse uh, to give us some information about this uh, new public health nursing program starting in Waitley. So let me hand it over to Mike then. Hi, thanks. Yeah, um, so I'm excited to be able to offer this to our residents as part of the um, uh, excellence grant um, that has that public health nurse position. Um, and so I'm starting, uh, I have started uh, bi-weekly 
uh, nursing clinics where it's uh, no appointment necessary, just working um, uh, with anybody who wishes to come in and discuss um, chronic or acute medical conditions, medication issues, concerns, side effects, COVID related, long COVID related, um, any you know related uh, health issues. Um, I, I still haven't got a sharps box yet. I've asked for one, but I'd like to be able to offer that. Although Becky has that at the at the health center um, at uh, um, Becky um, Jones. But at the same time, you know, uh, the more the merrier. Anybody looking to get rid of sharps um, uh, would be a, a good thing. So um, I have witnessed um, those uh, these nursing clinics. Uh, that the FERCOG was doing uh, for South Deerfield for years through Lisa White. They no longer are connected um, to the FERCOG, uh, uh, South Deerfield, Deerfield specifically, but they have a, a, uh, a nurse that they've hired now who is continuing those. And so um, it's been something that um, I, I thought was going to be nice to offer. Um, I've also doing them in the other uh, foothills towns of Williamsburg, West Hampton, uh, and soon to be Goshen, I hope. Um, I don't have a location yet for Goshen. But anyway, uh, um, that's, that's, that's what I'm offering. So um, right now, when people, the, the way people might find out about this in Waitley would be, I'm guessing Board of Health will put it in the scoop coming up, right? That's exactly I'm, right. Um, and we also a... posted it and on the um, town website as well. Um, Amy did that for me and uh, we'll be hanging. We've got flyers up and, um, you know, I think it's always takes a little time for something like this to get established, but i um, looking forward to being able to offer folks one more, you know, it's not a uh, in depth. I, you know, I'll have, you know, the ability to do blood pressures and temperatures and, you know, some, some other very, um, you know, minor um nursing duties but you know nothing nothing elaborate and certainly um the other important thing i i, I want to be able to offer is after 20 after a couple of decades now of um elder home care um i i'd like to be able to um uh, advise and, and work with folks about um home care resources um i'm sorry about the ducks there they're making a lot of noise i don't know how disruptive that is but um i can sure hear it <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, uh, I think that's going to be an important resource for the four communities as well of the foothills. Um, so that's uh, that's what my uh, focus is. Sounds like a great thing to be doing. <laughs> There's a chorus chiming in. Apparently, the ducks like it too. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody um, here who has a uh, question or comment or want to pipe up it now on this topic? Where Where is it going to be located again? I missed that part. I hadn't mentioned uh, in this particular book, but uh, it is the um, the old town hall um, office, all, uh, a space all the way in the back. Um, uh, yeah. So um, there'll be a space in the hall for folks to sit. So there's some privacy um, in that end room. Uh, and um, yeah, like I say, the second and fourth Tuesday, 10 a.m. to 1130. Okay. Ongoing for the time being, you know, as you know, as you might know, um, the uh, excellence grant um, is in its second year. There's another year to go, um, but we're already seeing uh, um, a, a strong movement. The state of Massachusetts was extremely happy to um, that one of the results of COVID was to um, you know, uh, bring public health nursing to, I, I think, all but two or three towns in the entire state that don't have a public health nurse covering the area. Um, so this may, you know, it's kind of, might be kind of the end of my nursing career in, in some ways, but I'm looking forward to establishing the role and, and the job description for uh, some uh, young nurse to come along soon. Thank you for all that information. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stop by and say hi one of these Tuesdays. <laughs> we'll try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
any other right. any other questions at all or anything um, any comments any suggestions um my uh my email is the phn at berkey.org that's on the flyers that's on the website um uh, for the town um i'm trying to make sure i make myself available uh for folks who have questions about the clinic and and want to know what that's what it is and happy to answer those in advance and that'll also be in the scoop uh on the uh, coming up soon all right great well thank you michael thanks for joining us you and bet. stick around because the excitement has only begun <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. You bet. Looking at our agenda, the next um, item we just always have on here is COVID-19, but this week or this time around, we don't have anything to propose to change about COVID-19 policies or anything. So um, I'm going to go on to old business. Um, we have a decision possibly to make about using some additional CLFRF monies to uh, for door openers at the town hall. And maybe I'll ask Brian to say a few words first. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, so this has to do with uh, the select board in the past approved $12,000 of, I'll call it ARPA money because it's easier, um, which is, or COVID money, so I'll refer to it as, um, the, the select board had appropriated about $12,000 of ARPA money to um, install door, automatic door openers at the town hall. Um, and the quote that we had was a, a little bit old. Um, this was originally contemplated, I think, last fall um, when uh, the electrician that we were planning on using went out to get the, um, really the final quote um, it was significantly higher. Um, so I guess, I guess we have, we really have two options. One is we could, we could try to find, we could try to find other um, uh, vendors who, who might sell a different product. Um, I don't know if, I don't necessarily want to sacrifice quality. Um, or we could uh, go with the quote that we have. Uh, but it would, it would require appropriating additional money, so of, of presumably the ARPA money. Uh, so I guess I'm just looking for direction as to what. Would you clarify what that was again? Presumably something money? I couldn't hear. Um, ARPA, America Rescue Plan Act funds. Okay, so presumably ARPA money would be, okay. That's the, the the pot of money that that's can be spent by the select board without town meeting appropriation okay yeah. and this is I, for um automatic door openers <coughs> excuse me on those back doors so that as you come in you can just press the button be, there's in. five of them mm -hmm. i'm sorry there's five doors all together, Joyce. It'll be the the, oh. the front door that faces Chestnut Plain Road, the back door that's where the handicap parking is, and then as you, and then as you come in the handicap parking, there's another fire door rated where you come into like the old section of the town hall, and then both bathrooms will be also fully oh, accessible. Okay. So that's the five doors. Okay. All right. That's what that was exactly what I wanted to to know because I thought from the reading the material there seemed like there's a lot of doors, but not so it's not just making like one entrance accessible. This is really making it completely accessible. Okay, Fred, do you have anything to add? Nothing to add. Joyce, can you hear me? I, I, I can hear you now. No. Okay. Well, um, does anyone want to give a motion then? Move we approve the additional ARPA funds to cover the five doors, door openers. I'll second that. Okay. 
Great. Um, all those in favor, I'll start with Julie this time. Yes. Fred? Yeah, I can't consistently hear Fred. So Fred, if you're voting yes, like raise your hand or something like that. <laughs> so, okay, and uh, and me, yes. <laughs> All right, great. Um, next item is uh, discuss installing solar photovoltaic system with battery storage at the town offices funded through the MVP action grant. So um, there, I don't see Hannah here. So maybe it's Brian then again. Or yep, I can I can cover that. So we wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I guess, just an update with this project. Um, So, where do I want to start? Um, so, uh, Hannah and I are trying to set up a meeting with the um, Energy Committee to talk about um, several things related to the, um, the solar project. And again, just to remind uh, people, there's the town received a, a grant through the MVP program to put up um, up to 64 kW system, um, solar array system with, with battery storage at the town offices, um, along with some, with some uh, education, educational component to the grant. And this, so while we were formulating the RFP, some, some questions arose um, that we were hoping to get um, the opinion of the Energy Committee on. And the uh, experience and knowledge of those folks would be helpful. Um, you know, things that we weren't sure about was whether with any, what we wanted to do with any of the excess energy, whether that was net metering, whether that was um, renewable energy credits. We just re really weren't sure how to, um, which way to go with that. Um, we also wanted their expertise on things such as how to ensure the, the quality of the products. Um, you hear a lot about there's cheap components and cheap inverters and that they're breaking within, you know, five years of a 25 year system. We're looking for guidance up for that as well. And, and really just generally with the technical specs that need to be included in the RFP. Um, and then there's um, the conversations that, that, Keith, is, that Keith, Keith has had with our uh, a local electrician. There may be um, a compatibility issue with the three phase um, HVAC system that's in the town offices and um, the batteries. And out a little bit more. Um, there's three phase and single phase and all these things going on that, that I think really need to be dis, uh, discussed and it mm. just needs to be additional discussions before we put out the RFP. Um, I, I think the 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 concern is is the operation of the of just the batteries when the when the when the power would go out it, that it wouldn't be sufficient to operate the HVAC system. I think that's what the concern was. Mm. Um, but I don't know, and I don't know really know technical aspects of that. Um, I'm no. hoping that's it can help work through. Um, I think those are all good things that we have to take into consideration. I think one of the first things you said was net metering versus Rex, and that's probably the most straightforward of the <laughs> of the questions. That I think in general net metering is better unless you've got some super duper Rec program um, going on. Um, but um, the other thing that I hope we'll consider in there. <laughs> and I think the energy committee is going to talk about this next week. Um, it would be that um, if you have energy stored in your batteries, um, that you can sell it back at a very nice rate to the energy company during peak 
energy demand times so that we should make sure our battery bank is large enough to do that. Um, that may also make it a system that's better able to handle, to do the three phase um, that we may need. But I think the people who put those in will know about the three phase. That's expertise we probably don't have on the energy committee at the moment, but might need to um, go to the folks who made our original um, um, what's the right word? They made like an estimate for us, right? The people, maybe it was Valley Solar, if I remember right. Um, and uh, and ask them about that because they'll they'll know that there are places where you need three phase and where you don't. Um, and they'll know how to hook a battery onto that if you can. And if you can't, I think they would have told us. So they, I think you're right. There's got to be a little bit more investigation here. Hmm. Joyce, can you explain, I know what the um, SREX are because we get them at home, but what is net metering? That's something I, I oh. don't know. Oh, you probably, if you have solar, have net metering if you're in a home. Um, okay. Until recently, municipalities could not get net metering. So it means if you're um, uh, producing more than you use, uh, your uh, electricity goes for sale on the grid uh, yeah. and you only get charged for the difference between what you use and what you um, and what you produce. So that's usually that's a smaller number. Um, and then because of that, all of the other charges, like the delivery charge and like, you know how the electric bill has like a 20,000 charges on it, not just the production charge. Okay. All of those are based on the, your same monthly usage. So even, so you produce this and you don't have to pay the delivery charge and all of those other things on the energy you produce at your own location and send out into the grid. Um, okay. That was not the case for municipalities. And it used to be the case that yeah, there's no place else for you to dump that energy. You had to put it on the grid, but if you're a municipality, you didn't get credit for it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so the net metering is new to municipalities, which is really nice. Um, but the net metering is just the, the idea that it's the net difference between what you use and what you produce that you'll get billed for at the end. Right. And is it an either or? net metering or renewable energy credits, or is it both? You, you can get both. With, with the new system, with the new <coughs> program, I don't know if you have to make a choice. You might be able to get both. Okay. Um, um, but my understanding is that the SRECs are like less and less valuable as these programs go on, <clears throat> but net metering maintains its value. I um, okay. So, but it, I think we'd have to talk to someone who knows better what the rewards the SREC program is is based on. Okay. For a small residence like we have, it's the SRECs are valuable. Hmm. It's what. Yes, and it does depend on when you got your solar. Sorry. It depends on when you got it. For yeah. example, I think we got ours almost ten years ago, and mm -hmm. those were fairly valuable SRECs, but there's new programs and as time goes on, the SRECs are, um, you get fewer, basically, fewer SRECs. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I have another question toward the end of um, the meeting, uh, the meeting materials that says, and question that comes up is whether we want to make use of the entire roof the proposal from Valley Solar was only sized for the town offices. Um, that sounds like a terrific idea, but then I'm possibly remembering incorrectly that Hannah had said the connection fee is based mm. on the size of the project. Is that so? Yeah. And we are not, we don't have an interconnection, interconnection fee at this point, but if we make it a larger project, will that come hmm. into play? So there wouldn't be an interconnection fee. And I, I, think, I don't recall what the what the trigger of that is. I think it was maybe a 250 kW system, maybe okay. even larger. 
Yeah, it was something so really much large. larger than we would get anyway, even if we. Yeah. Um, what may change, I think, is is and it's looking like we'll, we'll probably need to do an upgrade to the the pad mounted transformer. Um, I think as the cost of a as a transformer gets larger, I think it's probably a little bit more expensive um, as to what we, we would be. So, so I think there's costs, right? Um, and if, if we're not using the entire roof, but it's not that much more expensive to use the entire roof, and we can get mm -hmm. credits or or SREX, you know, yep. is it worth it? And in that sense, the grant funds are limited. But it, would it be worth it if we mm -hmm. found something somewhere else to, to pay for the system that's a little bit bigger? Yeah. Um, yeah. Those benefits. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'd have to find out if um, municipalities can participate in that. Um, I, I, they've got a, a clever name for it that starts with a with two words that start with a C, and I, um, I'm blanking on what the word is. Um, but the, there's a, a a program that Womico has started, not Womico anymore, sorry, Eversource has started in this area, where if you have the battery storage and you have enough of it that they will pay for pulling energy out of your batteries. And um, the, uh, it will probably depend on the system you have. You can set it to, hey, I need to heat 30% of the batteries in case the power goes out or something like that. But you can buy the other uh, 60, 70% when you need it during peak demand. And it can it's a money maker in some ways. It can certainly offset your other electrical costs. So it's something we ought to look into now um, and make sure that if we can do it, that we um, and if we have the funds that we're willing to put towards maybe a little bit of extra solar and a little bit of extra battery, that that would be something we could do and help offset, you know, for future costs for this. Yeah. Fred, do you have um, something you want to add? Um, sounds good to me. Okay. Well, I don't think we have a, a decision to make on this tonight, right? Um, is there any, and, and I know I'll be at the meeting with the energy committee, if there's anything else um, we ought to be considering on this, I would say, speak up. I think we've hit most of the questions that we want to keep uh, keep getting some answers to. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing anybody wants to keep going on this. So great. Let's move on to uh, item C under old business uh, to discuss and approve the bid documents for the purchase and installation of wall panels to create additional office spaces at the town offices. So uh, I know this has been in the works for a little while. Um, do I want to, do you want me to do this, Brian, or you want to take this one? I see the pictures in our meeting material might be nice to show those up on the screen. Yep, one second. How's that? That looks good. So yeah, what we're proposing to do in the in the back space here uh, is be, so behind the the town clerk and treasurer collector's office, there's a, a a long narrow space that was separated off from um, the rest of the building. There's the you know this is the the parking lot would be up here. Um, if we're if, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and is, is, is this way and this is the front of the building over here of course what we're, what we're proposing to, to do is, is purchase panels um, essentially office panels and have them installed that are 
between seven and eight feet tall to create uh, three private office spaces. Um, and that was when the building was originally bought uh, many years ago, this was kind of the original concept was that there wouldn't be permanent walls put in because it would require uh, moving uh, sprinklers and um, HVAC ducting and things like that. Um, so, and the idea was that it would give us a little bit more flexibility also um, as the town's needs changed um, in the future, the panels could be taken down and moved. Um, but this is, a, this is based off of an estimate that we had received from a company. Um, and we think it's the best use of the space back there. So um, we included us for the scope of work that would be sent out to the uh, vendors along with this, this sketch plan. Um, so we're looking for uh, the approval to put this out to, and, and solicit quotes. We would be back to the select board, obviously, for approval and award of um, whoever the, the best uh, and lowest bidder is. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions? Not, not on the purchase of the panels. Do we have any? Do we have excess furniture to fill these offices now, or will that require additional purchase of new, new furniture? If we're getting three new offices. Um, I think the the additional furniture purchases will be minimal. Um, it's, I think it depends on, on, on who eventually ends up in that space. Um, but um, at least two of the offices, I, I think, are going to have be moved from other areas within okay. the building. So they're going to, um, assuming their furniture fits, then they will bring it with them. Bring it with them. Okay. Okay. I think this is a great use of that space. So I completely, I think we should go ahead and get some get some prices and see if we can make this happen in the next few months. You say the, the money for this has already been appropriated? Yep, it's been appropriated for a while. Yep. Cool. Okay. Well, I would entertain a motion then. Move we approve, approve the Purchase of the wall panels. Um, yeah, oh, we're really yeah. approving the bid documents, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Purchase. Yeah. So, I, okay. So, uh, I would move that we uh, approve going out for bid, um, uh, or approve these bid documents. Maybe that's the best way to try to put it the same way they say it in the. Uh, uh, in the agenda here, so that I'm uh, doing it right. I'll second that. Okay. Our voice may be coming through here. Yeah. Yeah, it is true. I'm, I don't consistently hear Fred. Which makes me think that the owl isn't picking up as a microphone. Oh, well, it's picking you up now. It should be going to the owl. Okay. Yeah, the live sound isn't going on either. This was all working at 5 30. I'm not really sure what happened. <laughs> okay. Well, keep speaking up like you are, Fred. That's fine. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we've got a motion on the floor. It's been moved and seconded. Um, uh, all those in favor, Julie? Yes. Uh, Fred? Uh, me, yes. Okay. So why is that going through there? The owl's not picking it up. Yeah, always picking it up. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's go on to item D then, uh, to discuss the weatherization project at Waitley Elementary School, funded through a Green Communities Grant. And I'll turn that over to Brian as well. Um, I just wanted to give an update as to um, where this project stands. 
Um, Hannah and I had a meeting with, with Green Communities uh, staff and Eversource uh, to discuss incentives for the project, utility incentives. Um, and uh, we're also setting up a meeting with um, uh, Christy, the principal at the elementary school, and uh, Bill Hildreth, the facilities uh, person for Frontier. And we're going to discuss with them the project. One of the one thing that threw us for a loop was that because um, apparently we're considered a Berkshire gas town, um, and that there's the building is served by Berkshire Gas, that the incentives actually need to come through Berkshire Gas instead of Eversource. Um, so that was news to us, but it's really the same process. The one hiccup that it, that it might pro that it might give us is our plan to use the, the energy source was the was the company that we were planning on using. There's a provision in Mass General Law Chapter 25A that allows um, that allows municipalities to use um, utility approved vendors or, or contractors. Essentially, the the utilities would undertake a procurement process and prepare a list of um, qualified vendors that municipalities can use. Well, it turns out that there's not a single list and Eversource has a list and Berkshire Gas has a list. So we're waiting to see if the, the vendor that we had used for the energy audit and who we're gonna use to do the work is on the Berkshire Gas list. Um, but mm. the project will be, will be moving forward. We don't, have the, we don't have the notice to proceed yet from uh, the part, uh, DOER, Department of uh, Energy Resources. So, um, the project we had, I think we have two years to do the project, but I just wanted to provide an update as, as to where that is. So it'll be it'll be moving ahead. I, we just we're just not sure which um, uh, vendor is going to be doing the work at this point. Okay. So that's really I just wanted to provide an update on okay. that. Does anybody have any questions to ask Brian there? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, on to new business then. Uh, so here we have, we want to discuss desired terms and conditions to include in the request for proposals for the reuse of the Waitley Center School, which um, is much has been thought, thought, uh, said and written um, about this. Um, and I want to thank Brian for kind of his his document that put um, kind of put the I don't know the the various possibilities and which ones were supported by the center school committee and which ones were were not and so on and which ones were practical and which ones were not. So um, maybe I should turn it over to Brian again. Yeah, so <coughs> this is picking up on on. I guess years of discussion now um, through the, the Center School Vision and Committee conversations with the Select Board. I know the Historical Commission weighed in on, 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 on their thoughts on the building as well. The last vote that the Select Board had taken, um, and I don't know if it was a formal vote or informal vote, um, was, was to direct staff to uh, prepare an RFP to lease the space. Um, the board in the past had talked about um, had the possibility of a sale of the building with with uh, various preservation restrictions, and that was not a preferred uh, that that was not the preferred path of the select board at that point. And it, um, the visioning committee and the historical commission, I think, also recommended against that. So Hannah and I were preparing the RFP, um, and we were thinking about. Uh, the realistic possibilities for leasing the building really in light of its current condition. Um, and I think we really came down with, with sort of two options that I think one is more viable than the other um, in, in terms of how we proceed. Um, one is whether the, um, whether the, the, the select board, whether the town wanted to consider um, a, essentially a long-term lease of the building. And under that long-term lease, um, the, the select board of the town would be asking the, whoever the, 
the developer is of that property uh, to pay for 100% of the redevelopment costs. Um, that would likely mean that the lease would have to be long term um, because we know that the redevelopment costs are, are probably, you know, extensive, uh, are probably quite high because there's, there's some a lot of work that needs to be done to that building. Um, and likely that, that might be reflected in the, the, the amount of rent that somebody will be willing to pay as well. Um, I think from the from a redeveloper standpoint, they would they would want to have the opportunity to you know recoup their investment, what they make into what they put into the building. So that's going to require a longer term of years um, in most cases. Um, so if we just put that that thought aside for a second, the other the other uh, type of lease would be would be a shorter term lease. Um, but the problem with that is that the building. The, the, the condition of the building right now isn't isn't really conducive to us handing over the keys to somebody. Um, you know, currently the, the water's off. Um, if I recall, and it keep, can correct me if I'm wrong, but I when there were the water leaks, I don't know that um, they were all repaired. Um, so the water's been shut off. So it would require you know plumbing work at the least. Um, and it, the building's been been closed up for a while now. Um, you know, I, I think it would require flooring. Um, it, it, it just needs a lot of work to get it ready to, to turn over to somebody um, on a lease, on a short-term lease. Um, and I'm happy to, to, we can open up, up the building if anybody wants to walk through it. Um, but I'm not sure what condition, the, the last we knew the heating, the heating system was, you know, was operational, uh, the water, not we couldn't turn the water on today so it would require what i'm trying to say is it would require an investment of, of the town uh to get that building ready to to lease to somebody uh, on a short-term lease um, and there's depending on what the, the the preferred uses are there's issues with accessibility as we all know it's a split level building you come in between the uh, first and second floors and you go up or down um, and obviously the building envelope is gonna need some work. The front stairs are gonna need some work. The windows are gonna need some work. Parking lot's gonna need some work. So um, in, in discussions that Hannah and I had, we think that the if we were to try to lease it, a longer term lease is probably most likely at this point. Um, and if if we don't wanna lease it, then, then, then I think the staff needs to go in a different direction in terms of if we're going to invest money in the building, then it's you know not putting the RFP out for you know, but to, to kind of direct our time towards trying to find resources to get the building in that shape for a shorter term lease. So those were our thoughts. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> mm. My understanding was one of the reasons we had gone towards leasing was because um, there aren't a lot of resources necessarily out there to fix a building like this one that has so many um, that has so many problems and keep it in historic shape and 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 all of those kinds of things. So it that is there is there something changed in the uh, grants world that makes us think that we could get some resources to say, I don't know, redo those front concrete stairs and make those actually usable for as one example, or re, you know, you know, gut whatever part of the building that we historically can get to put in better plumbing, um, a better heating system, um, actually have a, a, a building where mold is not a problem because um, those are substantial investments. And I don't know in a competitive grant environment, I, my understanding was that that's probably not going to rise to the top of a lot of grant funders tables, you know, or, or, I don't know, stack of, of grant applications. Um, unless we have a really, really compelling reason why this building needs to be needs to be saved. Um, so I 
I agree that the long-term lease seems like um, the easiest way to go for now. There's no guarantee we would find someone who wants a long-term lease in exchange for doing those kinds of um, upgrades and repairs. But if we don't try, we don't know, right? We're pretty sure it's going to be a lot of work to get grant funding to do um, the other kinds of repairs it needs, though. And I guess I'm going back also to our experience with the, the town hall renovations um, from years back. Um, we did have to put some town money into that, right? And certainly at the, we did all kinds of work figuring out like how much people might be willing to spend, what kind of things people wanted out of the building and so on. Um, so and many of the uses that we we wanted out of that building we now have um and the center school can't really do a lot of those things either so it's, i guess uh, i'm i i feel like we could redirect your energy towards finding grants but i don't know if that's really a better way to use your time than trying to at least see if we could get a long-term lease no oh, so i'll shut up and let Julie and uh, and Fred have a chance to say something. I agree we should look for a long-term lease. There are other problems with repairing for a short-term lease too. If we renovate the building, do we renovate it for residential? Do we renovate it for office? Do we renovate it for retail? And because you can't just sort of renovate generally <laughs> and limit our options even of a short-term lease. Um, of who, and, I, and I don't think we know which of those directions we would want to go in at this point anyway. So I think trying for a long-term lease and letting the potential tenant, assuming someone's interested, make that decision is the better way to go. Mm. Julie, do you have anything you want to add? Or, yeah, or add um, not sure how to articulate. Um, seems like a huge project. <laughs> um, mm. And I guess I'd ask uh, those of you who have been on the board and working with the town longer than I have, I'm assuming we wouldn't be starting from square one on understanding what the town might want or need. I'm, I'm assuming there's some kind of understanding out there that the town would like to have. I think there was a questionnaire, right, in mm -hmm. here about what, what people would like to see. Um, I would support. I would support a long-term lease, but I would wonder whether we need to put kinds of stipulations on the type of um, lessee um, given the character of the town, the small <laughs> town, the, it's a, you know, it could be a fairly valuable property for the right company or person. Um, but I think we'd also want a little bit of um, say as the town of Waitley over what goes in there and how it affects the look and the character and the um, traffic and income and stuff of the town. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I, if we put out to lease and we get an interested tenant, we then negotiate those points into the lease. Right. Yeah. 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 But that's, I guess that's my question is, would we do that? Right. And do, do you have any idea of whether somebody would even be interested or are we going at this, like, let's put it out and see if anybody would be interested? Do you hear whisperings mm -hmm. or have ideas? So we yeah. hear <laughs> Go ahead. Of, of general interest. Um, the question is, you know, uh, we don't really know until we put it out there whether that general interest translates 
into somebody willing to put money on the line, I guess, right? Got it. Um, so it's, I guess it's, it's I'm, other than sort of staff time and, and resources to, you know, to put out the RFP and, and, and administer it through the process, um, it's very little uh, resources spent for us to, you know, to, to find out what's out there. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's alluded to, a, if somebody's not interested, then the, the, I think the discussion changes as to, you know, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're looking through the RFP draft. There's a lot of hints about what might be appropriate or not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's saying it well. You know, it is protected historically, and um, the it would be eligible for this kind of grant or that kind of grant um, because of that historic preservation. But that also puts some other um, some other constraints on it as well. So, and because of the RFP, I looked up. I didn't realize that the uh, the North Center School on North Street was actually moved down to uh, Springfield and is in that little Starrowtown Museum. I didn't know that. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. So I went and looked that up on, on Google. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> so that uh, I, I'm wondering if Starrowtown, maybe they'd be willing to come and get the Center School and <laughs> move it down and mm -hmm. then it could be historically preserved and but i didn't i didn't actually we'll send the rfp to them and see if they want it or something yeah. maybe that's the better way to go but yeah, like yeah. sending out an rfp and there are some very creative people out there who might come back with something that we can work with yep yep Well, I'd support moving forward with that. Is this something that we need to? Um, let's see, what does it say here? Discuss the desired terms and conditions included in the request for proposals uh, for the reuse of the Waitley Center School. So if we put that out there as a lease um, with presumably long-term is only something that's gonna make sense to them. Do we, we don't need to restrict it to long-term lease, but we should have our expectation be that a long-term lease um, might be the the most likely thing we get back. Um, it sounds like we've got a consensus. Do we need a vote on that, Brian? I, I think what we would plan to do is we would finalize the RFP and then bring it back to the board for, you know, for review and then vote, then ask the board to vote to issue the okay. RFP. Okay, that sounds good. Is there anything anybody else wants to um, wants to pipe in on, Keith? Okay, all right, great. <coughs> well, we're moving right along, aren't we? <laughs> um, next is to discuss the establishment of cooling centers for residents during times of extreme heat. And um, no, I you know, it's been working really well to turn things over to Brian, so. I don't have any problem with doing that. I don't know if Brian's getting tired there or something. That's all right. So this has come up the past two years when we've had extreme heat advisories. <coughs> I feel a little lost because all the other towns are, you know, we're opening our cooling centers. And I sort of think about, we don't really have one. Um, but we have these, now we have these two air conditioned buildings that are climate controlled essentially around well this one um you know then we have these spaces available and empty during the day so um i thought it's uh, if if the board would like we would come up staff would develop a you know a cooling center policy um that the board could adopt and we could know that um next summer when it rolls around then we can open you know open these places open these buildings up for, you know, folks to come into, for residents to come into. The one that easily comes to mind is, is this conference during the day. Uh, and there's, there's public restrooms, there's, you know, a small kitchenette across the way that, and there's Wi-Fi, which everybody wants these days. So if 
if somebody needed a place to come cool off, um, town offices during business hours would work. Um, we could have a conversation with the library while it's open, um, during the hours that it's open. Uh, and also the, the town hall could be a possibility as well. There's a little bit less oversight there. Um, if somebody wanted to undertake some mischief, um, mm. that everybody would, but um, there, there's just less staff oversight there. And that would require locking and unlocking the building and, and maybe uh, the town employee, whether it's the uh, police or somebody, you know, just checking in once in a while, if we were to do a, a building that's um, less, uh, mm, yeah. Yes. Um, and then it also occurred to me if we're doing extreme, you know, if we're doing extreme heat events, what about, you know, times of extreme cold when these buildings are heated and, you know, somebody needs a place to go. I don't know why, you know, that it couldn't also be available, you know, during times of extreme cold. Mm -hmm. it, it, it came up earlier this summer, right? I think Joyce, you saw it come across. The county Senior Center was talking about it. And, you know, some yeah. had this at this place and well wait we didn't I mean I, th I think places were offered but we don't really have a, a policy for that as to when to open or close them or to offer them so yeah well it sounds like what we're thinking about is maybe getting a couple people together to talk about what might be a reasonable first start on that Right. That's we're not proposing. Let's start opening things from tomorrow or anything like that, but have something ready for the next season. Yeah, um, yeah. That seems reasonable to me. Um, it should absolutely be something where we're in touch with the the senior center because that's one thing that they do. They think because the seniors are are more vulnerable to the extreme heat. Um, so it's an issue that they worry about. And maybe um, Mike's not here anymore, but our public health nurse. Would probably be a good person to have in the loop on that as well. The public health nurse board of health, something like that, as then senior center consultant. Yeah, just on. keeping Jennifer in the loop and um, uh, kind of uh, harvesting good ideas from her as well. It might be something that we decide. Well, we don't need to do this as a town of Waitley. Um, if the uh, South County, what hopefully will become South County Community Center uh, is going to have that function going on, it might be, or maybe they might say, hey, could we use uh, the room in the town hall for a cooling center in the summers and we can participate that way. There's a whole lot of ways we could participate in something and let's find the low hanging fruit and pl pl pluck it. And as far as in, you know, what would trigger it and check with Deerfield and Sunderland and see what, what their policies are to, or any other community that would trigger opening. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Do we need to decide who's going to be this working group? Um, I think I... I think I heard the folks that we want to consult. I think if, if yeah, if it's if it's an informal working group, so I think it's a little bit easier to. So the idea with that we would bring back, uh, I guess, a, an operational policy or something to vote by the select board. Yeah, I think we're just requesting Brian develop a policy to come back to us with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, all right. I, uh, we got two more items here. Um, one is to declare various items as surplus property and make them available for disposition. And that was quite a long list that we got here. Um, uh, in, uh, uh, a thorough list, I assume. It looks like um, really kind of looked under all the various stones and uh, closets and things, especially at the center school, it looks like somebody really went through there and found things that we don't really need anymore that 
um, may actually help make that place a little bit more cleared out and, and ready for something to happen there. Um, so I'd entertain a motion on that unless people want like to discuss anything they see on the list. No, I move we declare the items on the list that we were given as surplus and make them available for disposition. I will second that. Okay. All of those in favor, uh, Fred, uh, Julie. Yes. Me. Yes. Okay. All right. Our last item before town administrator updates um, would be to appoint Ed Zaneski as a part-time police officer. Um, I think the explanation is basically that we forgot he was getting too old to do this uh, without having an act of Congress, or excuse me, an act of the legislature. Um, and uh, we, apparently we have an act of the legislature has happened and we're free to reappoint him should we choose to do so. Is that a reasonable summary, Brian? Yeah, and the chief is comfortable with reappointing him. Okay. Um, does anyone uh, have any discussion items for this? No. Okay, great. Well, well and I'll go ahead and move that we reappoint Ed Zineski as a part-time officer. Second. Um, all those in favor, uh, start with Julie this time. Yes. Fred. And me? Yes. Okay, great. Well, now I'll really turn it over to Brian for town administrator updates. Looks like there's a lot of interesting things on there. There are. Um, it's like the update meeting tonight. Yeah. Um, so Hurley Park Accessibility Improvement Project, that's a <clears throat> lot um, sidewalk to the, uh, to the pavilion restrooms there, renovating the restrooms um, for ADA compliance. So um, we received conservation Conservation Commission approval last night for the uh, the parking lot. Parking lots um, previously disturbed uh, area within the wetland buffer. Um, so um, we got their approval last night for the work. Um, so the next part is that we'll have to um, uh, get to uh, put together uh, specifications and we'll put the work out to bid. Um, I think our plan was to hopefully complete the work this fall. That's going to be the time where it's least disruptive to uh, the use of Hurley Park. Keith, myself, Hannah, um, Darius Modesto, and um, I'll come on blanking on his name, Bill. Uh, Keith would know. Um, oh, Hildreff. I uh, met at Hurley Park, and uh, it seemed like, and uh, Chris Williams from the Rec, uh, Rec Commission. Um, and it seems like if we could get it done this fall, that would be the least disruptive uh, time. So that's our goal at this point, would be to do the work now there this fall. Um, so that's the update there. We'll, we'll, we'll come back with, with uh, uh, the, the specs and things like that for the board to you know, vote to put the project out. Um, Haydenville Road Reconstruction Project, another update here. Um, so this past Friday, uh, myself, Keith, and town council had a conversation with um, uh, representatives from EOEEA. Um, that's the the, age, the state agency that handles Article 97 land dispositions. Um, and we had a good conversation about um, you know the project and uh, what they're going to expect from us. Again, Article 97 land is a, is a state protection on certain types of land. And the state has a policy of not uh, letting those uh, protections go, um, but they will in certain instances. One of them is, is the instance we're requesting in terms of roadway improvements, but they have what's called a no net loss policy. So if we're, in this case, we're, we're proposing to remove uh, just over half an acre from Article 97 protection. They're gonna look for uh, half an acre plus of land and mitigation for that. Um, so 
the select boards had discussions about various parcels in the past, and we had those discussions in executive sessions. So I don't want to talk too much about what we had discussed. Um, but uh, there was also uh, so the the land that comes that is coming out of Article Nine Seven is watershed land owned by the City of Northampton. Um, that's one of the purposes of Article Ninety Seven is to protect public water supply. So we're going to need Northampton's um, uh, sort of cooperation and and partnership on this project. And um, Keith has already had a meeting with them, um, and we sent them some materials about what we're proposing. Uh, as land in mitigation. Uh, I don't know how receptive they will be to that. Um, I think they expressed a preference to Keith that the land that they, look, that they would look to um, have swapped would be um, land within their own watershed. Um, and the parcels that we were discussing were outside of the Northampton watershed. So we're gonna, in the future, uh, over the next uh, month or two, we're going to have to have conversations with Northampton about, you know, what's going to be mutually acceptable for for all parties. Understanding that the project benefits both Northampton and Waitley, um, it improves you know drainage and then runoff into the reservoir, and it, and, it, and it improves the roadway obviously and roadway safety for residents both, you know, from Waitley and, and who travel through. So there's mutual benefits to everybody. Um, but I just wanted to update the board. Um, that's where we are. Um, we're trying to work with the city of Northampton to find, you know, mutually acceptable land that, that we can uh, propose the EOEA. And then again, it requires special legislation, which we also found out needs should be filed by the city of Northampton instead of uh, lately because the protection is actually on uh, land owned by the mm -hmm. city. Municipality. That's a technicality, but it's a, a bigger a bigger ask for us for Northampton. Um, so we'll keep you updated as to as to how that's going. It's still we're I would say we're ahead of schedule. Um, we're having these conversations early, so um, it's still scheduled for uh, construction in federal fiscal year uh, 2025 through the, the the Franklin TIP. So. Um, we will continue to, to move the project forward. Um, any questions on that? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, Joyce, this had come up in emails and I think you may or may not have been a part of them, um, but talking about South County, uh, well, which may be called South County Community Center uh, Building Ownership. Yeah. Uh, something we want to table, but um, it, maybe it's too early to talk about that, but I, I think the question that, that came across was, you know, what are the preference of the towns in terms of assuming it's a, uh, a new building is, it, it is built, how that, how that ownership would work, whether it be owned by a single town and the towns would each pay uh, essentially rent like we do or an assessment like we do for scams, um, or it's whether it's, you know, owned by, uh, presumably a, a new regional entity would have to be created, but, um, yeah, it's not obvious which model would would work for that. Um, so I think it's it's good to know this is a ongoing discussion. I think there's actually some grant money that may be coming in, so we might have to actually. It might be more urgent to think about that <laughs> now when there may be some money on the table. Probably not enough to build a building, but um, it may also depend on proceed with their overall building projects and have this building fits into that and what their funding sources are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Without making a big discussion item out of it, um, uh, often we're using buildings that belong to one town and then the other towns pay rent, you know, to that uh, to that town for use of the building. Um, and that works when you've got a building that's suitable. Um, when you have to do a new building, Anyway, it, um, uh, and they didn't do this for SCEMS. Uh, they did get a new building out of it, but they did not uh, make SCEMS like a nonprofit or something. It's a, although it is its own um, its own entity, um, you know, you could potentially, if you form a nonprofit, to be uh, to do the services of South County Senior Center or South County Community Center, 
um, that nonprofit could own the building. Um, and then the, you know, the towns pay in to support the nonprofit. Um, and then they have some other things they can do as a nonprofit um, for fundraising and stuff outside of if they were a municipal entity. But none of that's been discussed as to <laughs> which way, you know, which, which kind of um, uh, organization you want to have and so on. So this is really, really early days. Um, and that ties in with like, what would you do with the building? Who would own a building? Makes um, all the difference as to what kind of organization you're going to have. So. So I'm glad this came up in town administrator updates because I think it's good for folks generally to know that that's a question on our minds and um, clever ideas, please send them. Uh, the next one, Mass, uh, Mass. Community Grant Award. Um, this was a, a grant award that wouldn't even apply for. So um, <laughs> it's good. That is really good getting, I know. getting grants. She can't get grants that we don't even apply for. Um, mm -hmm. but they're not that easy, most of them. Um, it's, a, it's a, it's so it's a technical assistance and equipment grant. Um, and what DOT did was um, they ran some analysis of, of town, of municipally owned roads in Massachusetts um, to figure out which ones had the highest essentially the highest rate of um my, my notes here I, I think it was like lane deviation crashes or something like that roadway departure crashes something like that um essentially people were driving off the road and crashing um it's those double poles it's the double poles on christian lane they're just so big and everybody you see those and you just you just go right into them so it's rural roadway departure crashes. Um, and they did an analysis of all means municipally owned roads across the Commonwealth. Um, and Christian Lane came, uh, Christian Lane scored, oh, as depending on how you want to look at it. Double poles. Um, <laughs> so the town's eligible for assistance from, from MassDOT. Um, a consultant will come out that's hired by MassDOT and take a look at the road and do an analysis and give us recommendations as to how we can reduce those uh, roadway departure crashes. Um, so it's a technical assistance and equipment grant. Um, they'll also provide, Mass DOT will also provide the signage um, that's recommended, whether it's whatever we think it could be. Um, speed limit signs, slow down signs, whatever the consultant comes up with essentially. Um, and then they also provide either, uh, my understanding is either a, a pole mounted speed feedback sign or a trailer mounted speed feedback sign. Um, and this will all be free. Um, so if it's pole mounted, I, so a question came up in the webinar whether we could, you know, move the, essentially move the equipment, right? Or move the signage. And um, they want, they were a little bit more lenient with trailer mounted uh, speed feedback sign that we could move it across town, but the expectation is that it would spend some time on the road. Uh, is the reason for the for the grant award. So, um, just wanted to uh, provide an update on, on what that is. Uh, and my sense is that this will happen over the next, um, I don't know, maybe six months depending on, uh, on I think the consultant schedule and how many consultants they get. Uh, but we don't know exact, the exact timing on this. Um, special town meeting. So I, I always create lists of, of special town meeting articles that we need. And I try to wait for one that sort of pushes us over the edge and that has the, uh, uh, a time sensitivity to it. Um, it, 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 we may or may not have one, and that's related to the um, the borrowing that was uh, done by the uh, water commissioners for the water merger project. Um, the, due on the borrow, the payment is due on their loan um, in the middle of October, and um, the hookup fees that they've collected are, are not equal to the amount of the of the loan that was taken out, um, and uh, they're requested deadline for payment of the hookup fees was the first 
so that's next week maybe mm -hmm. uh, so um we have to have a contingency in place if they don't collect all hookup fees as to how they're going to repay that note um and i think the at this point the safest way to go is is likely for them to reborrow or, or borrow again uh you know that amount um it's we sent out the so previously there was a town meeting authorization to borrow we we've, we've sent that out to our our uh our financial consultant that we work with to do the borrowing. We don't think that that we think we can reuse that same article to borrow again. By we, I mean the water commissioners can use that same article to borrow again in that same amount. Um, but if the if they come back and say no, it doesn't allow you to, then you know we would need to hold a special town meeting by the end of September. So we should have the answer back. Um, I, I think hopefully by next week. Um, in that case, yeah, I think if the answer is, is yes, we need to, then I would, I would need to prepare a special town meeting warrant and, and ask the board to, you know, review it and, and call the special town meeting at the end of December, if you're willing. Um, in the September. Yeah, September, sorry. September. I say December? Yes. We don't have one then, too. Um, wanted to, I just wanted to let you know that that might be a possibility. One question on that. Would the new borrowing say to be the same amount as the initial borrowing, or would whatever receipt they've gotten be used to pay off to pay down the debt so we borrow less? Yeah, so in the new borrowing. I don't know. Um, presumably that, that could be a possibility. Um, I'd ask the Dwayne to have the water commissioners, you know, discuss it and take a vote on it as to what they want to do. But presumably they're they've collected some money. From the hookup fees that could be used to reduce the borrow. Yeah. Yep. Um, water merger project update while talking about it. Um, obviously, the, the building's constructed. Um, the current holdup right now is that is that they're waiting for um, Verizon to install poles to get electricity uh, to the building. Um, that's it's been a holdup for a little while. Um, All right. Uh, Verizon. Verizon owns the poles of Waitley, so they would okay. So they would they would install the poles, and then EverSource would run the run the wires. Um, so they're waiting on that. I think we're hopeful in the next week or two that those poles will be installed. Um, and the it's a replacement pole, and then it, it's a new pole on the on the easement owned by the water department. It'll create another double pole in town, um, uh, for good reason. Yes. For good reason, and uh, um, mm -hmm. that's that's the holdup right now. Um, at this point, yeah, okay. A couple months that they're able to, you know, finish the connection and and get that project wrapped up. It's been a long time, long time coming. Um, Wayne's been doing a lot of work. Whenever you drive past there, Wayne's mm. building a building. Instead. Like, yeah, and, and they are saving a. I think they're saving a, a, a good significant amount of money by by doing the work in house. So, um, so it'll it'll get there, and I think it'll it'll, it'll be done fairly soon, within the next couple months. Uh, the last one, complete streets project update. Um, again, this is the project for to to finish the sidewalks along uh, Chestnut Plain Road on the. East side, east side, east side um, from the, where the Veterans Memorial sidewalk currently ends to across from the church um, and have a crosswalk um, across just up and road there. It'll create sort of this, the loop, uh, you know, through town, uh, through the center of town. Um, there's also work in extending the sidewalk at the elementary school and also some, some, some traffic, uh, some traffic improvements. I think mostly striping and intersection realignment in West Whaley. Um, it will also be covered through the grant. Um, Keith has been working with uh, the engineer to, to finalize these plans, and I think our, our, our hope is to have a, like an open house meeting, um, maybe sometime you know by the end of September, um, to make those plans available for people who want to you know, stop over and see them. I think you know, available online as well. Um, 
so that's that project is, is going along as well. And I think Keith, in terms of in terms of the sidewalk actual construction work, I think we, we were thinking you're probably thinking next spring, right? In terms of how your schedule. Yes. Will. Yes, I would like it to be you know everything finalized and bid pack, bid documents prepared and go out to bid this winter so that a contractor will have it on their schedule April 1st, because we're looking at a needing to be a completion by June of 23. Okay. All right, are there any um, items not anticipated? Uh, can I add one, one thing? Sure. So you recall that um, as part of the budgeting process this past this past year, fiscal year 23, there was an appropriation made for a recreation coordinator, the hiring of a recreation coordinator. Um, we put that uh, we put that advertisement out, um, and we have resumes back. Um, so I was hoping that we could set a sort of uh, informal review committee. Um, I was going to have it be myself, uh, two members of the rec commission, and I was wondering if they wanted to be a lucky select board member that wanted to also review resumes. And if not, then then uh, I can review it with the rec commission members and then we can provide a recommendation. Um, if hmm. I, I'd, I'd volunteer to be the lucky select board member. Thank you. Thank you. OK, great. Brian, I'd also be interested in scheduling at some point in the next month or so a walkthrough of the center school because I've I have not seen the inside of it for many years. Love to yeah. take a look. Absolutely. Let's do it before it gets cold. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or before it start, decides to start raining. Yeah, it's okay. Or before it rains. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so All fun. right. Um, well, I see on our um, agenda, there's two meeting dates that are put out there um, for the tentatively for the 14th and the 28th. Um, so maybe we should take up that before uh, adjourning. Um, I personally have no trouble with either of those particular dates. Good with those two dates. At this point, those work for me as well. 14th and 28th, yes. Okay, great. So those are, uh, we'll end up crossing tentative off there for the next one. So um, if there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I will motion, I will move to adjourn. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor. Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Fred, if you seconded it. <laughs> All of those in favor, let's start with Fred. Oh, I can't hear Fred. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> and me, yes. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you.